No, there was a point where I stopped enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, and as yeah, soon as I stopped yeah. enjoying it, it just wasn't worth the hassle. This industry's got to be fun. And if it's not, then you may as well, you know, go and open up a chain of news agents. Mm. I don't class you know it as a job. We don't come to work. We come to a youth club on a Friday mm. in here. Fuck me. It is absolutely <laughs> yeah. pumping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but that's classic. what it's meant to be. That's exactly yeah. what. And if you're not enjoying it, they won't enjoy yeah. it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you get a bunch of like directors sitting around a, a table being like, right, let's design a barber shop. It feels like that. Like it doesn't mm. feel authentic. Whereas like, I would argue in that point that yeah, it doesn't feel authentic, but again, coming back to brand, if you've got a specific vision and a specific customer that you're trying to target, design element of it is key yeah, to, but to that. I suppose yeah. what we're not doing is like, we're not targeting anyone. We are just a collective of like artists mm. and like barbers who are like care about the craft and people will be attracted to that. Was there a difference between being a franchisee and being yeah. Marcos, the, the barbershop 100%. owner? Is there a difference? When I owned as a franchise, it was good to learn from but I didn't really get much support from them. In my head, I'm thinking, I'm coming into this, I want to expand, I want to get shops together. If you're telling me that we're going to get this, we're going to expand, let's do it, let's do it properly. Don't take the piss and then, you know, start going down rather than up. Hi, welcome to the Noble Barber podcast. I'm Anthony LeBan and we'll be talking to various people in the industry who've made it and their journey and how they got here. Talking honest, cutting through the crap, and making sure your story and their story is heard to help your business and hopefully mine. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and I hope you enjoy this, this episode. Hi there. Uh, welcome to another episode of The Noble Barber. Um, I'm Anthony LeBan and I'm here with a panel of young business owners. Um, I'm here with Connor from Project Barber, with Marco from The Cut London, which is where we are at the moment. Thank you very much, Marcos. And Joe Vipond from Joe Vipond London. Is that right? It's correct. Okay. <laughs> I've got his name wrong every single time so far tonight. And I dropped everyone else's surname on purpose. Um, so we're going to be talking really with, with you guys about setting up your store. So I think really the, the first topic we should talk about is why the kind of transition from being a barber, cutting hair yourself, being behind a chair for someone else or in someone else's shop. Why the move to branch out and be a barbershop owner who's going i know i'll go i'll go so um, I'll go. Go. i don't mind um so yeah i got into barber in like a bit of a different way so i actually started off uh, i went to university um i started working in like the corporate world like i didn't particularly love it or have a passion for it but then i ended up going to this like barbershop near my office and when i went in there i just seen all the lads like having a good time uh, there was like good energy, uh, all the customers were having fun. And I remember just thinking like, this is such a class job. Like what a way to like make a bit of money. And I couldn't get it out of my head. So then four years later, I uh, ended up, I just couldn't get out of my head. I was speaking to my mates and then yeah, just quit my job one day, decided to become a barber, uh, started working for someone. And I think I just loved it so much that I thought, why not open my own shop? But yeah, I don't know why <laughs> you guys got into it, but it's just such a good environment, such a good atmosphere. I think for me as well, it was the environment that that made me change from construction. Oh, I was no. working with my dad from 14, so up until 20, 21. And then the environment, I was 19 on site managing staff and you know what guys are like on site, older than you and you're 19 swinging, <laughs> swinging your weight around. The, it's like, it's not enjoyable. So the environment for me, like clean, um, yeah, clean the connection major. that you make with your customers and just the atmosphere with the lads, that was, that was what took. That's class. I think for me, I used to get my hair cut every week. Like, and yeah, going into the shop and like the buzz around it, everyone's just like having a laugh. I could do this. And then you never <laughs> listen to your mom and dad. If, the, if I listen to them, I should be rich. I'd have about 10 <laughs> shops. They used to be like, be a barber, be a barber. You love it. You can always get your hair cut, go and do it. And I never used to do it because I used to think it was the worst job. Like, not the worst job, mm. but when you're 14, 15, you're like, no, I want to do other things. I don't want to do that. And then a couple of years later, I was like, you know what? Actually, like, I was, sit I was just sitting there because he, he ended up being my mate and it was just a cool place. I was like, I'm going to do the course. Hated my old job. So went and done the course and never looked back. But why the step up then? So, I mean, I, I think we kind of all get that that you know you guys obviously love the industry and 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 the, and the crack of being behind the chair and working with people but yeah there's not everyone owns their own store you know i mean for every shop owner we've got 
a couple of hundred barbers who are working for someone. Yeah. What What was your moment? Your kind of crossroads in the, yeah, you know, your crossroads that you went. I'm going to do it. To be honest, I think I knew from the start. I don't know about you guys, but I'm like a pretty ambitious, driven person. And I think like no matter what I do, like I want to reach the top. It was always a vehicle that I will uh, become a barber and then I'll open up my barber shop. Yeah, I think so. I just uh, said, why not? Like, See, yeah, I, yeah. I never thought I wanted to be a barber. Like it was always like the business for me. I always wanted to yeah. be successful in something. And I think when I stumbled across barbering, it was more self-expression. And, you know, from what I, at the time, barbering for me was like the tattoo shops and things mm. like that. And that's yeah. how I knew it. And then... And I thought, well, actually, no, it's not. But as I started to learn and enjoy it, <laughs> when I got explained the business side of it as well, so I was explained a pound a minute and you'll do well. So this guy he was drawing on a whiteboard and he was like, one pound, one minute, 15 minute haircuts, 15 pound, mm. 30 minute haircuts, 30 pound, 45 minute haircuts, 45 pound. And he said, it's just different markets. There's nothing wrong with either of them. You can be where you want. What's well, a different type of customer in a different market? And I, like yourself, yeah. wanted to be the best. So I was mm. like, well. And that ambition was always there for you. you yeah. Think? 100% for me, yeah. I think I kind of like fell into own, owning it, like, which sounds weird, but because I worked for a different brand first, had a franchise with them, and then kind of like I didn't want to be part of that franchise anymore. So it kind of like, I had to take it up on myself and be like, right, I'm either taking the shop or I'm going to have to like disappear and like lose the shop completely. And luckily it worked in my favor and I managed to keep the shop that we're in now yeah. and it's worked well ever since. Yeah. See, I like it. I mean, I was accidental, point. I think. Yeah. I, I, I think I was probably unemployable. So, uh, <laughs> I, so we've made that leap. You've made that. Yeah. And I do think, I, I agree, most of the people I know who seem to open up shops tend, tend to have had that ambition yeah, I've met a lot of barbers recently who've gone on well and they were like footballers that had injuries or, you know, they're, yeah. they're quite a group of ambitious people anyway. But there's the reality of opening your own shop. So why, you know, you, you're Battersea, you're Clapham, you know, you're, you're London's Leicester Square. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know why it feels like you've got to do <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but why did you scout your areas? Are you from these areas? How did you, why, why, where you are? Yeah, I live in Wimbledon. So again, when... You can't throw a rock without it in a barbershop <laughs> in Wimbledon. No, I, <laughs> <a> lot, literally. <laughs> I worked in Dulwich first and okay. then... That was with the, the, the head franchisee. Yeah. Well, once I finished the course, worked there <clears> and they were like, listen, we're going to franchise a few shops. Do you want it? And then they were like, we'll open you up a shop rather than you take a new one on. And I was like, no, I want the clap. Sorry. They said, we'll open you up a new shop rather than you taking right. an existing shop. Yeah. And I was like, no. And I this want was already it. here. Yeah. I was like, I live in Wimbledon. I want Clapham. It's easy to get to work. Yeah. I'm, a lazy, I'm lazy when it comes to traveling. <laughs> so I kind of like forced my way to take the shop off of them. <laughs> and yeah. It worked well. Nice. So I got ordered. I, <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe this, but I actually was going to. So it was after COVID when I opened up and I was actually going to open in Shoreditch and I had, like went and looked at like a, a location there I was like yeah I'm going to do it uh, but I didn't I got this like weird you worked around that area I worked around that area so like a lot of clients and stuff so, but I had this where like where did you work over there? I worked at Barber Barber okay. in Spitalfields so a lot nice. of clients around there so anyway after COVID uh, yeah seen a location was like yeah this is perfect but I got this like weird gut feeling that just something wasn't right when I met the landlord what so year I'm, was this? this was uh, 2021 Okay. Yeah. Post COVID. Yeah. Straight, yeah, yeah. Out, straight, yeah. Off, straight, straight off. Straight off. Yeah. Down, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, I just got a weird feeling from the landlord. And sometimes you got to just go with your gut. And I was going for a run. So I live in like Brixton Hill. And I was going for a run one day and I just ran into Battersea Rise and the shop was there. And I was just like, you know what? This looks all nice, right. Yeah. And it nice, was almost like nice it just like location. came to me. You know, there was no planning. There was no mm. like, nice this would be a good location. It does come to you though, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I was <laughs> li literally ju just on a run. <laughs> and yours? Yeah, so I'm from Bolton, so a small town just outside of Manchester. I was working at um, Barber Barber, but Manchester for Johnny. And just opportunity meets hard work. Yeah. <laughs> so a client of mine was a GM, got the job as a GM for a new restaurant inside a five-star hotel. He invited the directors down for a haircut, got the hair. They invited me to the launch night of this new restaurant. 
And one thing led to another. And over a longer period of time, I had an idea to, I wanted to open a barbershop inside a hotel, but I was thinking Manchester. And as I asked the conversation, I asked him, how would that work? How would it look? And he pulled out plans for the Londoner, um, which is on Leicester Square. And he said, is this something you'd be interested in? And obviously being from Bolton, I was like, well, snatch your hand off at mm. it. But there was a long process to get there. <clears throat> it was, you know, I left Barber Barber, opened up a salon in Manchester city center. But, and this is where for me, it was the business side of it. I was like, if I've got this opportunity to open up a business in central London, I need to be on my A game. And that mm. was where the business came into it for me. It was like, right, I need to learn business. And a friend of mine, he wanted to open a barbershop in Manchester, city center, asked me if I'd like to manage it and run it for him. I opened that three months later, COVID hit. And then that was that. Was that. Mm. So I felt myself stuck thinking, shit, I'm supposed to be opening a barbershop in London in <laughs> soon, but we didn't know what was going on. Mm. They told me that the opening was postponed. Um, so I said, well, I'm gonna go to Dubai so I can carry on cutting hair. Cause in my head, I was like, I need to carry on mm. upskilling to be able to handle the business side of it. Did I you have much learn. part of the, the look of your space or was that designed for you? That was designed for me. And to be honest, Anthony, a struggle of mine was I wanted to build a brand like, and to build a brand within an establishment that isn't yours, that you have no control over design. It was very mm. tough because I had the marketing element of it, which I had to push what I wanted people to see yeah. and feel about the experience. As much as I love the establishment, it's it's beautiful, but like what about- You didn't what actually about, get down the building. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah I didn't yeah, want to be Joe it, Vipe yeah. on the Londoner. I wanted to be Joe Vipe on London. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So it's like, I didn't want to be known as the barber at the Londoner when I've got my own business. And that's what I was trying to put. But you had the, so this was, <clears throat> this was, this was a franchise building. Yeah, yeah. And you'd done a real big, you did a big changeover for this. Yeah, so we changed it up completely. Was like, that an important bit? And does this feel more like Yeah, before you? it was very old school looking, quite like a Turkish barber's kind of vibe, like, you know, old square aesthetics and stuff like that, where I feel like we've now brightened it up massively and it's more young. We obviously cater for everyone, but where we're based in Clapham, a lot of young professionals, like everyone finishes uni, comes to Clapham. Anyone who comes to Clapham, they want to get their cut. They're like, I don't know where to go. I don't know where to go. We've got quite a young team. I won't say young, but like, you know, a good age team for, to fit the clients. Yeah. So. And you, and the look is important for. Yeah, massively. Because yeah. I feel like if it's old school looking, you're going to get more old school people where now we've brightened it up. We've had, in the last couple of months, so many new customers. I don't mm. know if it's like that changeover period where everyone's moving out of London and come back into London or if it's because of the mm. look, but it has. I think this is what people don't understand about the look and feel of your salon. Yeah. When, you, when I talk about brand, I mean, you know, people talk about it in a negative light, but I think they don't understand the power of it, right? Yeah. So yeah. once you know what you want, who you are, your values for the business, and you lay it out, you attract a customer, a specific yeah, customer. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, your place, I mean, you know, we, 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 we spoke about, we nearly filmed it yours. Mm. But, you know, yours is a really different, I mean, beautiful store. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Luke himself was saying how much he likes, he drives past and swerves every time he sees it. <laughs> but yeah, why, that, that. Why, where did you go from your look? I mean, I so think the be, look of your shops is really vital and great. But to be important. honest, I feel like our shop, uh, so we, I, we, I wanted like a sort of studio feel to it. Like I like the idea of like artists, like working in a studio. And like, I feel like our barbers are like quite like art, arty and they are artists in their own right. Like they really care about the craft. Uh, and fundamentals of cutting hair. So I wanted that look to it. Did then you I, design it? Uh, so this is the thing. I actually, I think why it it feels good is that, and there's a good energy in there, is like me and my mates like built it. So I like, I didn't like hire some people to come in and go, yeah, design me a shop. I was just like, hey, Andy, you're free. Yeah, cool. Would you be able to do this? How could you do this? So it was like a bunch of mates just got together built it up and it just naturally de developed and it just it doesn't look yeah. anywhere near as homemade as he's making it <laughs> <laughs> but we'll make one sure one some pictures <laughs> come up because it, it, it's a great look but. yeah no it looks it looks spot on and, and brilliant but what i'm saying is just like the energy is that it was built by community mm. you know what i mean like sometimes <clears throat> if you get a bunch of like directors sitting around a, a table being like right let's design a barber shop it feels like that like it doesn't mm. feel authentic whereas like Ours was built well, I would by argue our community. In that point, that 
Yeah, it doesn't feel authentic. But again, coming back to brand, if you've got a specific vision mm. and a specific customer that you're trying to target, design element of it is key yeah, to, but we're, to that. I suppose yeah. what we're not doing is like, we're actually not, we're not targeting anyone. We are just a collective of like artists mm. and like barbers who are like care about the craft and people will be attracted to that. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's like, yeah. oh, we're not like, we, we haven't been like, uh calculated in yeah. like our uh the way that we're doing things we're just like we just love barbering we're good at it we're a good bunch of dudes and yeah, people, people, people are attracted people. to that yeah attract i your feel people. like the yeah. shop yeah. automatically attracts people because yeah. the same we don't like you know our shops look specifically to get these clients we've done it just we needed a freshen up so like again like you said it was your mate like i just got my mate he used to, i've been cutting this over 10 years he's a builder yeah. i was like listen you want fancy doing the shop he was like yeah what do you want i was like mess around with it see what you get up to yeah. and he was like sweet and it's kind of like if people will walk past and they'll see the shop and be like i'm gonna go in there someone might walk past and be like i'm not gonna go in there do you know what i mean yeah so i feel like however the shop turns out it just i don't know i think it's like a, head, it's almost like a rep, it's in. almost like a representation of you i feel like businesses are representations of their owners and it's like it is an extension of me. I know it's probably dangerous to say because I'm so attached to it, but like it is like an extension of me. Like yeah. the way I've picked every little thing out. Well, and exactly even though like, you designed it. Yeah. Right. Even though I've like, even though I've got friends into doing it and stuff, I haven't just been like, I'll do whatever you want. I, it's been, I have like thought about it. I've picked mm. the best things that mm. I've wanted for the shop, but I haven't, I didn't have like an end goal of like, right, I need to make it look like this for this. It just was like, not for that specific I get a bit reason. of this, I get a bit of that. And it just, it's just naturally, yeah. it almost just well, you naturally built it. Building you it. Built yeah. it. Yeah, and yeah. what I'm trying to say is that you can craft it the way yeah, yeah, that yeah, you yeah. exactly want it specifically. Yeah. And just knowing them extra details would attract a certain type of Have you been able to do that with your shop? Not with this one specifically, but yeah. our growth plans and what we've got going on, the design element is like massive. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's it's, more bugs you more because yeah. you've not had not that opportunity. I'm sure you know what he's yeah. talking yeah. to. I'm, I'm a little bit few, I'm like, <laughs> I just want to get this salon open. Yeah, no, I'm but, so he's like, oh. <laughs> but, okay, no, but sure if, so if you've got to this stage, and I, and I really hear that, and I do like that, you know, I, I walk into my buildings and, and I love them. They all feel like home. It's really yeah. important that I feel comfortable mm -hmm. in them. Because if I don't, who, you know, why would anybody else? But, have you been surprised by, you know, what have you been caught out by from setting up your own? Are there bits of, of jumps out and it's shut, didn't think of that. As in, like, as in building the shop? Building it or just the actual, you know, the process of from signing your lease and, and getting the key to what actually I, opening the door and doing your first haircut. Yeah, what I feel like, and Joe, you might be able to help other people with this, is that like no one teaches you the business aspect mm. of when you're becoming, yeah, when you're going through this journey. I feel like you That's, learn. So like so many, like I remember uh, getting on the tools and being like, oh, I've got to be the best barber in the shop. And I'd like focused mm -hmm. years of my time, like learning the craft and all this stuff. And then by the time I went to open up a business, I was like, I've not got a clue what I'm doing. And it's like, I mean, I'll happily admit to that. Like, and it's been a learning process. And every year now, I'm almost learning more about business. Why well, I am, I learn more about business now than I'm barbering. So I, I, I remember what? when I was younger, I'd like watch videos of haircuts and now I'm watching business videos. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what we were saying before, yeah. right? It's like, Nobody teaches, nobody's teaching that, nah. especially to the young lads. And like I said, I, I was forced to, you know, learn about business when you're opening in an establishment, uh, your four floors underground, brand new hotel, mm. COVID, no travel borders, no clients. You, you're forced. I, I was thinking this is the best thing in the world, major achievement. And then I was hit with shit now i've got to get clients <laughs> yeah no no help you know no, no one in, no one was helping me i had to figure it out but i was forced to think business yeah and that's mm. what well this is why i'm setting up the coaching because there's the young lads that don't understand the business element yeah that i can teach you yeah. know and we, we can help that generation i want to play that part in, in this industry but i guess that's it though is it day one you know day you know day one at management school is generally the day one of I feel like you learn on the shop. job. Yeah. Mm. Like, Tough. you have to teach yourself, innit? So, like... Biggest was, shocker, though? Yeah, it's a big shock. Because, like, at first, you're like, you're a barber, you're not a businessman. And you're yeah, opening up the shop to be a barber. Mm. Yeah. And then the more you start doing it, the more you start realising... It's a different oh, skill set. Yeah, yeah, I've got to pay completely. people. I need to do the books. I need to do this. I need to do that. How am I going to draw customers? Am I going to... You know, how are you going to yeah. make your prices, put them up, like we were saying before as well? Yeah. It's like it, it, but you slowly learn along, along the way. 
Yeah, sometimes ignorance is bliss. It's like, I think if I knew all the stuff that went into it, I, I don't know if I would have done it. And it's like, mm. man, I didn't, honestly, I, some, I, when I hit the VAT, my client just called me, he was like, you've hit VAT. I was like, all right, what does that mean? And like, <laughs> you, you just have to explain it. And it's, yeah, there is like a bit of naivety there, but it sort of helps you because you just, like I said, you just learn on the job. And yeah. You, you just well, I think deal, that's also a good deal thing, because, yeah. you know, it's, yeah, well, did you find yeah, you got to exactly it find that resilience somewhere inside oh, of you? Yeah, you oh, have yeah. to. I'm, mate, I'm, my journey has been tough. You yeah. know? I couldn't afford rent at one point. Mm. You know, I was sleeping in a hotel free of charge, but the reality of that was it wasn't nice living in a hotel mm. and then traveling to a hotel to, you know, cut hair. And that was your life until you figured it out. Yeah. You know, and that's what the younger generation, I feel I'm positive about the industry going forward. And I feel that the lads that are younger do need that support, that help. Yeah. Not just lads, you know, everybody that the younger generation don't understand the business element of it and can save them freaking <clears throat> hundreds of thousands mm. of pounds and yeah. years of your life trying to figure it out. Right. But do you find, yeah. is it, is it the step to, is it, is it the paperwork side? Is it, I've got to pay bills, I've got to set a payroll, I've got to do it's, my VAT. It's got everything. Systems. It's like, it's just like, it is like one of the biggest jobs in the world. Cause you, not only are you like building a business, you're building a team, you're training the team, you're making sure, so you're managing and then you're also trying to do accountancy, marketing, someone might open up down the road, you're doing all this and then before you know, oh, someone's called in six and you're dealing with that and it's just, there is just so much yeah. to this game. And a lot of it you won't learn without experience. No. But there's certain parts that... Just... And also the anxiety that comes up when you're dealing with it for the first time. So it's like, you know, you might be sweet and everything's a pumping and then one of your staff members might say like, oh, I'm not going to come in or... Yeah. Might come in you're and then you, so you're dealing with it for the first time. So you're, you're anxious and then I think the longer you're in this game and you probably notice like maybe them things just like roll off your back. But like when it first when you first get these problems, like mm. you just have, well for me anyway, I have to deal with like the anxiety. Well, that's that what I'm interested in with. What what was for you, if I talk about your first few months of owning, what's the one anxiety moment? Because I definitely remember mine, these little the first time this kind of wave of what the fuck <laughs> yeah. have I done? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Why am I doing this? There yeah. was a proper I don't think I'd probably say panic attack, but it was definitely this kind of anxiety that came over and went. I've bitten off too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It must have been. That, was, that was me for six months. <laughs> yeah. like, literally. Oh, <laughs> I sat there and, you know, with four floors on the ground, like I said, in a spa, and there's no footfall. And I was thinking in my head, setting up this barbershop, come to London, no, you know, mm. um, experience in the market, mm. local market. I was thinking, how oh, the freaking hell am I going to get clients in here? <laughs> but you, and you yeah. made the step from, so you had the support, supposed, presumably, from the franchiser. Was there a difference between being a franchisee and being yeah. Marcos, the, the barbershop 100%. owner? Is there a difference? Did it feel... It did. Like when we, when I owned as a franchise, it was good, but at the same time it was like, it was good to learn from, but I didn't really get much support from them. It was, I think it was more one-sided, like, you know, they'll take your money and run with it rather than, in my head, I'm thinking... I'm coming into this. I want to expand. I want to get shops together. Like, you know, I'm I'm your best friend until we've had a falling out. I want to, if you're telling me, look, we're going to get this, we're going to expand. Let's do it. Let's do it properly. Don't take the piss and then, you know, start going down rather than up. Mm. That's not an agreement me per to me personally. So it was good at the start. Obviously, it's new, it's exciting. It was wicked. Then it just kind of went a bit flat. And then once I changed over, I was like, it's, I'm so happy I've done it. But the only scary thing was for me, I felt was because it's not a high street, it's like mm. yours is even worse. Because mm, mm. you're like getting four feet under. <laughs> because it's not like a high street, it's kind of like, oh, I've stumbled upon them rather than I've walked down a high street as a cool shop mm. where you're on a high street. So mm. it's a bit like, wow, that's cool. Loads. You're going to get a lot more footfall. Yeah, for yeah, us, it's massive. like word of mouth rather than mm. that. Mm, so yeah. that's the that was the scary side of it. Well, you must be proud of building a word of mouth business, right? Yeah, yeah 100%. You know, like, like I think like, we, that's one of my regulars. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, yeah, we've built like a massive community relationship now. Like with him, he's got three flatmates, all Irish boys. He brings all of his mates. And again, he's got another three mates who have just been around the area. Right, you know where to go. So it's yeah. it's word of mouth now. Yeah. And everyone's yeah. starting to like jump back on and jump back into us. Yeah. Well, I did feel like when we did change over, I don't know why, we did lose like 20, 30%, I'd say. I noticed it going down. I'm like, what do you think that was? Honestly, I couldn't tell I you. Is it the like, brand? 
It must have been. Like, I had regular clients who were coming in once a week, every two weeks and stuff. And I was cutting their hair, even when the shop was getting redone. Yeah. And then as soon as we were open, they just disappeared. I was like, what? So I'm like, that's, mm. that's weird. How did you you I mean, that's, that's kind of leading us neatly onto the, you know, one of the, the big questions I get asked all the time is, you know, how do you attract your customers? How do yeah. you, did you, did you have this plan? Did you sit down? This is the, uh, this is the idea that I think a lot of people have that as a business owner, you sit down with this fictitious pad and yeah. you write down a plan and you follow it to the letter. And at the end you have a successful business. I've never had a pad, but you know, how do you, uh, there's a moment where you know you're opening or the doors are about to happen. You've got your launch and how did you attract your customers? Where did you to find be, your tribe? To how be did fair, you do I that? I remember you saying like, what, what, <clears throat> what was it like at the start? And I remember I had like all the shop done. I was like, this, this place looks like really nice. looks sick. It'll attract people. And then I was like standing just behind the reception. And I was just like day one. I was like, all right, cool. Like, let's see how this works. And you would just like watch people like walking past the shop, looking in, being like, so weird and there's just one dude like behind the, the mm. reception like and it's hard because people got to take a chance on you especially if like the, the shop isn't busy or whatever they just like see this one guy they're like whatever New but, yeah exactly but it just that was it just one person came in and in my mindset was like whoever walks through that door is becoming my client i don't care who it is give them is. the best yeah, service yeah, yeah, yeah. you can give them so it, was, it would be like someone's barbers away on holiday to come in and i'm just like smashing it you know giving them full of chat the best haircut i could, could give right that was one then two, then three, then four, and then we just build like that. And, and then, then we just got busy, yeah. Completely different again, just because the model's different inside a hotel. You know, I wasn't getting customers from the hotel, so I thought, if I don't get customers from outside in, mm. I'm not gonna have a business, you know? So again, it was digital marketing, you know, Google, focus on oh, giving, giving the clients <laughs> the best service you can give them, everyone yeah. that you do get. So then it's the word of mouth, but then, Get them to get a review on Google. Build your Google profile. Yeah, that's that's you know. my major. Google ads, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. Google a lot ads of people well. don't use digital marketing and paid ads, but you know, it, you work out your margins, and as long as you're making profit, yeah. then ads are fine. You know, yeah. you've got to spend money to make money. Exactly. But again, I had to work this out. Yeah. Like no one told me, mm. like digital marketing strategy. I was thinking, I'm in, a, I'm in inside a hotel with no control over the operational systems, no control over how do I get a customer from upstairs down? How do I get um, a customer from in the reception to know that we're here? Yeah. They're all problems that I, that I dealt with. So I just focused on everything outside in, you know, how do I get good, like build the brand, the so reputation on Google, yeah. build the uh, the website and yeah. everything. And I did, I almost did like the reverse because because we're on the high street and people could see us. It was re it's interesting you said you focused on the outside in and I focused on the inside out. Wow. So I was just like, right, let's make sure that everyone in here is given the best haircut yeah. they could possibly yeah. give. And it was just all word of mouth. And still like, it's it's all word of mouth. I, I did that as well. Yeah. You know, I had to give the best service because again, yeah. word of mouth, if I didn't, if I didn't give a good service, then I'm not going to get a client back, right? Yeah. And for someone to come, it's quite intimidating actually. You know, if you're in a five-star establishment, a luxury hotel. I've been into the London. Yeah. I got lost four times. It's like, it's like, the, it's like the least. Well, yeah, it's, like, it's like Hampton Court maze. I can't find anything. You probably didn't even know there was a barbershop no. in there, right? And it does go down. It goes you know, down. I went to some event there and I'm kind of down the stairs and then I went back up and they're like, you can't go in there. Yeah. I got utterly lost. So to come in for a haircut and it, snake your way through. Exactly. So for someone outside mm. to walk into a hotel lobby, yeah. to the lift, downstairs, it's intimidating mm. for quite yeah, a lot of yeah, people. Yeah. So we had to build the approachability around the brand. You know, we had to make sure that we that was how we were portrayed. We were we weren't exclusive. Even though it looks exclusive, we we actually were for everyone. So yeah. just learning. And this mm. is where the business element comes in. You you learn all the things that the, the difficulties and the challenges that you faced with is where you learn the most, right? So, but did yeah. you think you did you um, did you find your tribe, or do you think your tribes found you? Question. Ooh, good question. Yeah, that is a good question. That's just doing my job. Please. I think I think, <laughs> I, I think they find you. I think that you like set up your stall the best of your ability. You do the best cuts that you can do, and then people will just be attracted to your vibe or not and there's yeah, like yeah, yeah. there's so many different barbershops but the same way there's so many different coffee shops and like why does one person go to another one mm. you just like vibe. that's what we're talking about the self-expression right yeah and how your shop is your <laughs> vibe and you attract your people yeah. you attract your staff members and yeah, yeah. It, it is it's but you, you can craft that 
Yeah. Well, he, authentically as well, you can and still same with do your that. team as well. That's what like w- one of the cool things I've noticed as well is like because you don't when you're a barber you attract clients, but when you're like a shop owner you attract teams, and it's like it's cool when you look around your shop and you're like, oh yeah, these dudes are all like. Everyone's like got a similar vibe, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to find staff though. That's my biggest struggle. Like, I feel like they're either too good and they want like crazy money or they've got their own shop or they're just not... Because we charge like a bit more than, you know, like your little cheap barber shop. It's hard. You can't really put someone on as a junior and still charge that amount. You either have to take one as an apprentice <coughs> and train them up properly or like get a good barber mm, and yeah. that's a hard barrier to, to get how across. did you find your staff my staff luckily they've all like come to me and like ask for jobs luckily and you know what i've had my team for a very long time one of one of them left he was with us for 10 years again my other barber he's been in for like seven eight years again one of them came left and then come back because he didn't want to didn't know if he wanted to be a barber anymore. And my newest guy, he, he just read past and he was like, oh, I like to look at that shop. I'm like, oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. So, yeah. You attract your people, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, yeah. I've got a, a guy that works with me as well and he's just left the salon. But luckily he was charging top prices in Mayfair, you know, and I, the establishment, you know, he wanted to serve his clients in a similar environment. Did he like going from a, like a salon, like busy shop? His, his clients like, love it. Like his the clients, quieter, lo- yeah, private. yeah, the private luxury yeah. experience. His clients love it, and that's what that's what I pride myself in. Yeah, you know, yeah, giving yeah. a different experience yeah, and yeah, yeah. a different type of client likes different things, right? No, I don't think in anything's wrong. You know, no. th- this industry is it's full of from top to bottom. It's different, but there's no wrong, right or wrong. It's just no. what what I mean, you want. Right? We spoke earlier, and obviously pricing does come up, and it's a you know, it's it's a big conversation we've had previously. But how do you guys? Did did you? How did you price it? I'd like to say that I had a well thought out strategic plan. But <laughs> I'd like to be honest. I knew that I had like worked in some really good shops, and I knew that I was like I had some talent. Like so, I looked around the area, just seeing who was charging most, and was like, I'll match them. And then this is, just this is... stuck stuck with them. And then as you know, inflation has happened and as like prices have gone up and stuff, I've just incrementally like increased uh, the price of our cuts. Um, this is where yeah. I'm not saying that it's wrong, mm. <laughs> but my pose and opinion on that is like, how did you put yourself in the market? Like according to value that you provide, like you looked oh, at no. everyone in, yeah, in yeah, the yeah. industry, or, sorry, in the area yeah. and they, he was charging this, he was charging this, he was charging this. Right, I'm going to put mine there. Rather than yeah, looking yeah. What, what your cost, what's it costing you to do a haircut? And, oh, and this the budget is how much money I want to make. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And that, that's why I said about like na- naivety at the start. Like, when, But now, yeah. do you feel like you've got your pricing? Like, actually, this is what well, I need we, to charge because to. that's what it costs me. And that, do you now understand how much of that haircut is yours? Yeah. So now, like, as time's <clears> gone on, and I've, like I was saying, I've moved more towards like the business side mm-hmm. of things. I've been able to like, you know, work with an accountant, <clears throat> look at the figures, and luckily we're in a pretty good place. Mm. Um, but you like it, it's all like a learning experience. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you guys the same? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I'm the same. Yeah, like I thought, like we're the area we're in, the rent we're paying, you kind of got to match it to the rent rather than client base wise. Mm. Yeah. But after talking, I think, yeah, prices might have to go up. <laughs> <laughs> just before we came on, we were just chatting. But, you know, you were saying, though, you, you know, you, quite rightly, uh, you, know, that you were saying you, you, you were quite nervous about it. You didn't yeah, feel like comfortable still about a price increase. Yeah, we still like, someone came in earlier, it was like, how much is a beard trim? I said, 18 quid. He's like, what do you mean 18 quid, mate? You're paying for rent around here. You know how much you're paying. What, you that's expensive? <laughs> that's what, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I've charged 48 pounds. Right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, but it, maybe your model's different though because yours is like a boutique service one-on-one. It's like you can mm. sort of do it. We're safe. Like like we've got like, we, I've got five chairs in my shop. Mm. So I just, I mean, these are like, in, like I said, I'm learning as a businessman and all different financial models. Like who knows, maybe you can charge like, I think you can like, charge well, more. like more and more, but like, uh, when I'm running my business, we've had to play it like sort of safe and like when do you concise. get that? When when yeah. is there that? Well, we, we usually of, usually usually, we'll, that's too usually much. we up our prices when we're like fully booked and that I feel like the shop is pumping and I'm like right, look, this makes sense. And how mm. much do you put it up by each time? A couple of well, quid it or? just depends like what 
how we're feeling, but yeah, a couple of quid, it could be a bit more, but. But this is what yeah. we're saying about value, right? So if yeah. you've got certain elements, I know I appreciate it, it's a different model and it's a luxury experience, and yeah. but in a salon environment, there's there's probably certain elements of value away but from the would, haircut. But would you, sorry, I would say, would you charge different value for different barbers? So say like, you're like, I know my value, you should charge to your value, right? So say I'm like, right, I know my value is like 60 quid a cut or whatever because I've been doing it for so long. I've opened up a shop, et cetera. I think that's a good idea. And then it's hard to do. So then the, the next guy that you get in is like, he obviously has only been working for three years. That's why he's working for you. And then the next guy might be working two years and one year. So it's like, as a shop, it's like, do you tier your price into each barber? Or, well, then or, it, it depends on the experience. For me, yeah. it's about experience. So the added value is what the customer would see from the experience. Yeah, okay, so, so away from the haircut, yeah. your lads are charged. Do you all charge the same right now? Yeah. Yeah. So the added value, the, it's not going to come from the technical ability of the haircut. Because mm. everyone's probably, I'm sure they're all yeah, great, yeah, yeah. right? So getting technical skills, haircutting, education right now, it's not going to change much. But the value from the experience that you provide is what your customer is going to see different. So everyone can come up at the same price is what I'm I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, I understand. I think, I think that's what people are missing out on is, you know, there's there's other things that you can do away from cutting hair to add so much value. Sure. It's also the areas, like you say, you know, it's very rent dependent. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, and I know the I know this area, you know, is expensive. Yeah, I know where you are, but I presume you're paying quite a decent rent. Yeah, ours, ours is expensive. Shop, um, yeah, yeah. And obviously, you know, London's Leicester Square. <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, there's not a huge difference. You guys are charging quite similarly pricing, yeah, yeah, I, think. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Although 34, we're now, 37. there's a couple of quid difference, so Marcus yeah. will be charging more from tomorrow. Good man. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, you know, you're in the West End, so again, yeah. and you're in a, you know, a six-star hotel. So <laughs> what are you charging for a... For a 80 gents? for a haircut. 80 quid for a haircut. Oh. You guys are charging around the kind of 35, 40 quid mark. Yeah. yeah. But it's finding your market. I know a lot yeah. of people kind of spit their cornflakes out when you start talking about 50, 60 pound haircuts mm. do you think it makes a difference on timing like how long do you, you, you spend that yeah, how long is your 45 haircut minutes. 45 yeah, minutes yeah but timing definitely 100 percent. so yeah. if you put your haircut for eight, 80 quid yeah but you've done half an hour do you think people turn their nose up at it or do you not think yeah that? i think so yeah yeah, yeah. i think so because well. it, you know what that extra 15 minutes is the head wash it's you know the intimate experience that you're mm. providing it's everything yeah. else yeah. the little touches that take time yeah 100%. And the conversation in between mm. you know um I think that's it. You can't. I think if you set your stall that that's what it is. This is what we sell, mm. and then you don't. It's like you know, you go in to get a bag of apples, and the bag of apples is a fiver, and you come out and you realise I've only put one apple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah. going back, going, yeah. "I want yeah. me four quid." Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I do think there is that. It's it's establishing for all of us here that it's it's not. Yeah, it's more than just a haircut. Oh, yeah, for sure. that's yeah, 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 and that's how you, you found it. Our livelihoods, right? Yeah. Oh, and that's it's how like, you found it. Yeah, yeah, like like we were saying, mm. like that. This is our lives, mm. and, and the once, oh, sorry, and that well, and that clientele will will choose how much of their income they want to yeah. spend on you, and yeah. how yeah. much value they they think exactly. they're getting from your service. You know, if yeah. you respect and you say this is my service, I I valued at this. Yeah. Your customers will value you. And your service yeah. at that price. Yeah. And if and if they don't, they're not supposed to be there. You find clients elsewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Quick once round, if we can. I'm really intrigued. We've spoken a lot about what other people do on social media and how they're doing it and what we like and so on. What do you guys do? How do you how do you connect? How do you use? I know you Sorry. use Google Maps and we all use reviews, but mm. how do you use like Insta and Reels? And is that a big part of what you do? Um, yeah. Admittedly, we could be better <laughs> I like social media um i think what happens is when your shop gets very busy you tend to say like well i you can only put your energy in so many places so you're like we're super busy we don't need to worry about attracting clients but we the barbers are very good uh, we're all very good at like posting haircuts and i think we use it more to connect with other barbers mm. uh, yeah. versus customers definitely um and maybe that's something we could take a look at like switching or having a bit more of a balance but yeah we're definitely more towards like this is a good haircut we've that. done your average joe ain't gonna go and look at a barber page though yeah like why is I, he gonna bother do you know what i mean even yeah. though they should because that's kind of like we want them to that's why we're basically doing it mm. but if, if you're getting your haircut once a month you don't really care if you've seen a cool shop you're gonna go there you don't you're not gonna be like oh let's scroll on instagram and find a barber because one they ain't gonna know the name of this place 
two they're not gonna I think as long as there's enough on there to see that you're good enough you know like for me for social media I delegate and mm. I as long as the story that I'm trying to create yeah. for the customer is displayed you know like we were talking about clients not wanting a camera in the face some of them especially ones that are in a private um, atmosphere they just don't want a camera shoving in the face after yeah. the haircut. You know? Yeah, they they pay that price to be hidden. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly that. So but have you got barbers that, that like to show off a bit? Have you got barbers who've got their own Insta that are doing their own I've, thing? I tweet for all of our barbers have their own Instagrams. And I think it's just a matter of like showing your work and, and being proud of it. But yeah, mm. all of our barbers have their own Instagrams. They're all sort of encouraged to post and to create a profile. And I mean, it is good. Like if, if once you've got a profile, it'll like lead to other opportunities, whether it be like our shop and other shops. Um, but yeah. Yeah, and the power it, of collaboration as well. You know, yeah. like and when, so do you do other things? Do you, you, know, my, you got, I mean, certainly we're sitting in your shop with logos on everything. Do you merch up? Have you all done, of, we've got like a fully, a merch? we've got a fully branded product line. And one good thing about it, which when I was like creating it, I wanted it to be like zero plastic. So it's got like, we have got a little bit of plastic where it needed to be like on salt sprays and stuff, but most of the materials are uh, biodegradable or you know, recyclable. So we've got like a full product line, it's all branded. That's decent. Really yeah. that, and does yeah. that not, that you don't Insta up that? Does that not uh, like, like a little I, picture of you waving <laughs> your bottle of shampoo? Like, in the, like in I the said, cap. like with like energy, it's like, I feel there's like, we, we are like a very fast growing business and there is so much to do within mm. it. Like there's full staff, cutting hair, selling products, getting people sell. Like selling there's, products online. We do sell online, yeah. yeah. But like I said, there needs to be more of a And push. do you send them out then or how does Yeah, it, we send them out, yeah. From the shop, you just like package yeah, we'll just them up get and send the, it, yeah. get the apprentice to stick it in a little like package and run down this to Love it. the <laughs> shop. Do you, do you merch at all? I need to get into I mean, it. I met Sliders and Sliders got caps. Yeah. And you can't see, you can't mistake where Mark is. You know, he's got everything merched up and I love that. I've not, I've not got into that myself at all. Well, I haven't either, but we do get a lot of clients like who say, I love your logo. Have you got any mm. like t-shirts and stuff? So I think I, I'm going to do it, but not like loads of them. Like, there so my go. mate who helped me design the logo, he's a graphic designer and he's just a bit of fun. He was like, what do you think of these, bro? And sent me about, 20 different like t-shirt designs. Mm. I was like, some of these are wicked. So I showed them to my mates. I was like, mate, you need to get these printed up. Like, yeah. but at the same looks time, like, it looks like it's set yeah. to go on a, yeah. on a, on a baseball hat. <laughs> but yeah. then sometimes I feel like, are you stepping away from yeah. cutting hair and trying to be too involved with other things? But no, then people it just depends what you want, doesn't it? Exactly. Again, like, do you want to run the business? Yeah. Do you want to be successful in business? Do you want to be a barber? Do you want to be just in the barber shop? What do you want? You know? Yeah. yeah. What do you want? I'm, I'm working on other things outside of barbering mm. um, that are to do with the, the brand. You know, the old what, famous final. side hustle. Yeah. Mm. Thank you very much. Well, that's part one. Tune back in for part two. Many more topics to come. Welcome to the Noble Barber Podcast. We're always looking for interesting people and interesting stories. If you know someone or you are someone with a great story that you want to share, get in touch and come and join me on the sofa. Thanks very much for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the episode and we'll see you next time.